We are talking of composition in Carnatic music. We have seen that uh, there are two major aspects to Carnatic music. One is the composition, the compositional aspect, the other is the improvisational aspect, Kalpita and Kalpana Sangeetam as they are called. There are many kinds of composition in Carnatic music. In the last two sessions we saw Varnam, which is a major compositional form. We saw the structure of Varnam, its presentation in concert, its importance in pedagogy. We will now talk about Kriti. Kriti is the premier compositional form in Carnatic music. It's premier because it's the most prominent. Today, if you were to go to a Carnatic concert, this is what you would hear in a in a concert of say two hours or so you're likely to hear seven to eight pieces most of which would be Krithis whether or not other compositional forms are presented Krithi is almost always always presented in a Carnatic concert that is the case today but is it inconceivable that there should be a Carnatic concert without Kritis. In other words, can we conceive of a Carnatic concert without Kritis? Certainly, we can. In fact, um, a century or so ago, the bulk of a Carnatic concert was taken up by another presentational form called Ragam Tanam Pallavi. This is something I have referred to earlier. Kritis were very few and far between in, in uh, concerts that uh, happened in the early parts of the 20th century and before that. It's only uh, over the last uh, 70, 80 years that Kritis have come into the forefront and Carnatic music is predominantly uh, it revolves around presentation of Kritis. So in this sense it is a premier compositional form. Now what do we mean by talking of a compositional form? What are the other compositional forms that Kriti is different from? Now if I will just present to you a short list of the various kinds of composition that you might encounter in Carnatic music. We have already seen Varnam. I'm talking of Carnatic music concerts, presentational compositions. We have already seen Varnam. We have Kriti. Then we have a form called Swarajati. We have Padam, Javali, Tillana. And of course, we have RTP, Ragam Tanam, Pallavi. If we were to take a look at compositions in the north, in North Indian classical music, we have Khayals, Drupad, Tumri, Tapa, Tarana, Trivat, and so on. Now, all these compositional forms have likely evolved from older compositional forms we find references to a large variety of compositional forms in treatises like Natya Shastra, Brihadeshi of the 8th century and Sangeeta Ratnakara. A description of one such compositional form is, uh, can, I, I'll just quote this description. This is from Brihadeshi. Here, Matanga, the author of Brihadeshi describes a compositional form, a prabandha called Shukachanchu. Prabandha is actually a, a compositional, uh, a very, very generic term for a, a certain kind of composition. Now, Shukachanchu, according to Matanga, 
is like this. That prabandha which is sung with raga in the beginning along with ornaments and is next accompanied by tala well rendered with solfa and recited with drum syllables and also containing passages of meaningful text in various regional languages. This one has been declared to be Shukachanchu, a favorite of people everywhere. This is a description of a compositional form that was prevalent about the 8th century. And uh, in many of these descriptions, in descriptions of many of these compositional forms that we find in uh, these texts, we can see seeds of contemporary compositional forms. And uh, what we sing today, what we hear today is most likely evolved from those older forms due to various um, <coughs> factors, historical, cultural, there have been influences from the world of dance, from percussion, from literature. And uh, we have a, a good number of compositional forms in Carnatic music, among which today certainly Kriti is preeminent. Now, what is it to talk of a compositional form? What, what is common to all these compositional forms? And what could be different? Now, what is common is certainly that there is a, a textual aspect, a lyrical aspect to it. There is a song, definitely. The song could consist of meaningful lyrics, meaningless syllables, sometimes swaras, sometimes percussive syllables. But there is a text to the composition. As I mentioned in uh, my previous, in one of my previous sessions, there is almost no Carnatic composition that does not have a, a textual aspect to it. So, in this sense, Carnatic music is heavily centered around the voice. Compositions are basically meant to be sung. The any instrumental music draws from the vocal repertoire, repertoire of these songs and uh, presents its the instrumental music around these compositions. Now this is um, unlike for instance we all know western classical music as an enormous number of musical compositions that is solely instrument centered. The compositions are written for one or a large ensemble of uh, instruments. Even in Hindustani music, we have compositions called Gath, Masid Khani and Raza Khani Gaths, which are solely meant for instruments. And uh, sitar players and sarodias, they use these Gaths. And there is no uh, textual aspect to these compositions. <coughs> in Carnatic music, there is always a textual aspect and this is called the matu. The, the textual aspect of a composition is called the matu. It is contrasted with the dhatu which is the musical aspect. Now this text is always in all these compositional forms, it is always set in, in a raga and in a tala. That is, uh, a common feature of all compositions in Carnatic music. We do have a small group of compositions which use more than one raga. Uh, these compositions are cast in a string of ragas as it, is, as it were. These are called raga malikas, one raga after another. And uh, more rarely we also have tala malikas where more than one tala is also used within the same composition. But by and large, certainly the more serious compositions are always cast in a single raga and in a single tala. 
then what makes for the difference between compositional forms? One is the content, the lyrical content of the composition, the themes. We saw, for instance, in Varnam, there is always a romantic uh, theme, which is the romance very often directed at a deity, sometimes also at the king or the patron, but mostly at a deity. Now, by contrast, Kriti, the Kriti is always religious, it is always directed at a deity. Even when abstract philosophical ideas are being propounded, as we shall see, there are many compositions in Carnatic music that propound uh, abstract philosophical ideas, especially of Advaita Vedanta. Even when you have such a composition, there is always a reference to a deity, either Prakshinamurti or Devi or some such appropriate deity. And we have another set of compositions which I mentioned, Padam, Javali, these are all completely uh, connected with Shringara or love, romance. And again, Padams, uh, we will talk about these in detail, but Padam is um, sometimes uh, the, the love that is expressed in a Padam is quite often directed at uh, Krishna. Um, we will see one prominent composer of Padam, Kshetriya. He composed many compositions with Muva Gopala as the uh, as a deity, as a figure to whom the love is directed. Now, Javali, on the other hand, which is another compositional form, there the the Shingara, the eroticism, is of a much more earthly kind. So, we have this kind of differences in theme. The, the basic tone of the, the text, there are differences uh, amongst these compositional forms. Next, there is also the difference in the structure of compositions. We saw how Varnam is a two-tiered structure with a clear demarcation between the Purvangam and the Uttarangam and how the presentation of the Varnam also uh, is such that the two parts are shown separately and it is quite clear that there are two parts to this composition. Whereas a Kriti or even a Padam, there did, though there are sections in these compositions, they are presented as a whole. The sections are not uh, separated out the way they are in Varnam. Uh, a Kriti, as we shall see, is a typically three tiered. There are three sections to a Kriti. Um, Padam has a slightly different structure, so does Javali. Now, <coughs> Tillana, which is another form which we will again we will see in detail, it, the, the textual content of Tillana is filled with uh, meaningless syllables often drawn from the world of percussion and dance. Gita to Nikota Kajim, the Gita to Tanu 
So, these are some of the things that distinguish one composition form from another. But there is another somewhat um, nebulous criterion, but important nevertheless, that is um, plotting these composition forms on a scale from heavy to light. A kriti is usually serious music, it is, these are heavy compositions and among kritis we have some that are quite heavy, heavier than the others, grander than the others, but by and large a kriti is not a light composition, so it, it is it's heavy, it is nuanced, it is uh, musically complex. So also a varna, varna is also musically complex, it is, it is heavy music. Padam is even heavier than a kriti or a varna. You see these are very, very highly nuanced compositional forms. Javali on the other hand is quite light, it falls on the other end of the spectrum, it is a lighter piece, lighter in the sense the, it is not as heavily nuanced, it is not as filled with gamakas. So also Tilana, Tilana is also generally regarded a lighter form. It, it may not be always possible to apply this criterion in the, in the case of every composition, but it is to a large extent possible and it is a pretty important uh, criterion to, to talk about the differences between these various compositional forms.